Hey guys, Dark Recycling FPV here, and I'm getting ready to do a repair for a customer. This is actually going to be part of the uh, HGLRC warranty repair that we do. And uh, I told the customer I would do a video on this one for him so he could see uh, kind of how this is going to be done. One of the problems he's had was his button on his uh, transmitter on his uh, FreeSky XM Plus uh, is not no longer on there, his blind button. So I'm going to show you guys how to fix that. And I've got a video on that already, but I told him I'd do it again on his quad. Uh, but I am going to actually replace it with a new one. And then um, he's also got a... Uh, he said that he clipped these wires. He was running his battery to the top. And actually, this is designed for bottom mount anyway, but he was running it to the top, and I guess the props nicked it or something. I did tell him he could still run it to the top, but after looking at this, I've kind of decided it does need to be on the bottom, so we're going to go ahead and do that as well and fix his wires, okay? So what I'm going to do is we'll do a split screen like we normally do. There we go. And we'll get started. First thing we'll do is let me go ahead and set this aside, and let's get some screwdrivers here and get going. Find where all my stuff is. All right, here we go. So the first thing we'll do is we'll start removing the items and we're just gonna set them here. Okay, so here's the issue, and so let me see. Let's get these off. Okay, there's this receiver right there. So it's simply what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and um, uh, desolder this. Well, actually, you know what? If I want to show you how to fix this, it needs power, but I guess we can do that in just a minute. Uh, let me see. Is, is there we go. Uh, okay, so now you know I'll probably have to just desolder it. I mean, it's just going to be the only way to get this done. So let me go ahead and just desolder it. Okay, now I've got the new one here. Um, but here's what I will show you on this one. I like it. All right, so uh, sorry, there's a kind of a splice in that video there. Um, we're going to have to hold off on this one. I was really excited to show it to you, but the receiver is actually bad, so it's not even going to power up at this point. Um, but what I will do now is I'll just go ahead and open this receiver real quickly, make sure that everything else is functioning okay. There we go. And I will still use uh, my Toolkit RC setup to do this. Okay. See how we get our blinking light here. So I know it's working. Um, that that receiver, something else has happened to it that's caused that problem. So let me just set this aside now. Okay, so first thing then what we're gonna do is might as well just go ahead and get this uh, new receiver soldered on. So let me grab the materials I need. First thing is gonna be our flux pen. So we're gonna go ahead and get that ready. And then let's clean the tip on our soldering iron. And I'm gonna show you guys so if you look at the soldering iron, you're going to see it's nice and nice and clean. I mean, it really is. It's tinned up nicely and it's ready to go. You want to make sure your soldering iron's like that, right? And then I have a bunch of extra solder laying around here. Like, uh, I like to try to save the spools as I cut them off here. And here's one right here. So let me go ahead and unwind this a little bit. We'll go ahead and knock this out. It's a pretty quick solder job. So we'll do one, two, three. Okay, and then we'll retin the wires from HGLRC. So let me go ahead and just push those over so they're not over the board. And let's just retin them real quick. So we'll do one, two. One thing I did notice, and I'm not sure if this is HGLRC's doing or not, but I will advise and I'll talk to them about it. Um, on the one I just took off, there's no, there's no um, shrink, there's no heat shrink on it. So I mean, this thing is literally uh, underneath a plate of carbon fiber. And so my concern is, is uh, I would bet that this would short out. If it did touch it, it would most likely short out. So I definitely am going to reach out to HGLRC and wonder if they're shipping them like that or, 
or what? Because I'm the, I know the customer didn't solder this because he explained to me that if he could have soldered, I would have sent him the receiver and he would have done it himself. But he said he, he's not comfortable soldering this stuff. So I'm trying to see how I want to lay this out real quick. So let me just go ahead and lay this down. So uh, if HTRC is doing that, I'm going to advise them that they start putting the heat shrink around it because that's, that's really kind of asking for it. Um, in my opinion, that is, I don't, I'm not here to try to start any problems, but it would, it would be, I wouldn't advise that you put this that close to the carbon fiber and you don't even heat shrink it. Um, all right, so let's get the next one. There we go. And then let's get the last one. Perfect. Okay. So before I close it up, I am just going to go ahead and power it on and I'm going to use the smoke stopper. And guys, I will tell you that I recommend that you use a smoke stopper. Okay. Uh, please. So, um, we will use a smoke stopper here and I've got them on the website. So you just go to our uh, website, cyclonefpb.com and, uh, you can just search smoke stopper and you will find it there. So let me get this ready and I will plug it in here. And I just spoke about not having this heat shrunk, but I'm going to leave it off just to make sure I get power. And there we go. So we've got power. So we know it's blinking now and he'll be able to go ahead and do that. So let me go ahead and and shut this and I think that interfered. I think the VTX interfered with our Wi-Fi signal a little bit, but I can turn it off in time. Okay, so that's done. And now I'm gonna go ahead and heat shrink that down so that it's safe. And uh, let me see, I'll find just a small piece of heat shrink here. Something like, something like this, it's a, little, it's a little long, but should be just fine. So let's go ahead and do that. And this way we can at least protect this uh, device. Okay, so let's try that Look on the machine here. Yeah, I can't imagine this being in such a tight fitting quad and not having heat shrink on it. So um, I would say that, I mean, the, the receiver does appear to be shorted, the old one, although that's not why it was sent in. Ironically, it was sent in because the binding button was broken off. And I was going to make a video for you guys on how to fix that or at least the workaround. But unfortunately, um, the, uh, the uh, receiver uh, doesn't even power up. It's just getting hot now. Okay, so there we go with this, right? And so this is just going to, honestly, it could sit upside down. Uh, but for him to be able to reach the binding button, I assume we're probably best to just go ahead and do it like this. Um, unless I put it under the plate. So because the antennas are going to come back here. So let me see. I could put it like this. And then the antennas would still loop back and come up. So let me see the best way to do this. Okay, so we can do it like that. All right, now let's address the issue of the um, uh, XT30 cable, right? So he said that he nicked it. I'm trying to see where the electric tape stops and starts here. Holy moly, it's a lot of tape. It's like doing the Christmas lights thing, you know, you can't figure out. It's like a Rubik's puzzle here. Hold on. So I think I'm just going to wing it and get an exacto knife and just cut because I don't see the opening here. So, all right, maybe we can make our own start here. Oh, wait, what's that? Is that? Oh, this is like reinforced. Okay, now I see what's going on. So there's electric tape and then electric tape. All right, so, holy moly. It's one layer of tape off, and now let's see what we got left. Okay, so we have a nick here, and then we have kind of some, yikes, it doesn't look very good. So let me see how I want to address this issue, because 
Uh, let's see. All right. Well, it's not a. It's definitely this. This. This is more of a. Just gonna try to help you out because it's not an issue with warranty, but heck, I can't send a quad back when I know it's got issues like this. So let me see if I can just make this as easy as possible to try to fix it. Um, and I'll just charge for the cable that we're gonna use, but to take care of you. So right, let's move this aside. I just wanna be able to get to these pads right here without any issues, okay? Um, and I can tell you those wires are very close. So let me go ahead and see if I could get this off without affecting this wire right here. So let me just kind of push that out of the way and see if I can kind of, there we go. I think I better get some solder on there because this is not gonna melt as I was hoping. So let's see. This cable is really bothering me. Gotta make sure it does not get in the solder. Okay, there. That should push it out far enough. I may, end up, I may end up cranking the temperature of my soldering iron up just a little bit. But at the same time, I'm hoping that this thing will go because I've got it pretty hot, but. Their solder doesn't want to give right now, so I'm going to try something else real quick, and then from there we'll see. Now, I'm just going to up the temperature. Let's see if that's going to help. I don't want to keep it this hot for too long, but let's just see. There's the positive, and now if we can do the same with the ground without hitting those wires. Come on. Let's try to apply a little bit of solder to that, and then we're going to give the board time to cool down. There we go. All right, so we're gonna let the board cool down now. Make sure everything else is intact. Uh, it's all right, it's a little warm though. I mean, I gotta lie to you, that's not as, it's a little warmer than I like it to get, but um, that solder on there is a beast. So let's look at what we're working with. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the XT30 and it seems to have, it's got exposure here. The shielding is cut here. That's broken right there. It's cut right here and here and uh, it is cut again right here. So, I mean, the cable is actually pretty long. If you're sitting here, you're gonna mount the battery to the bottom, then it needs to be much shorter. And, and I'm not sure, again, well, uh, you know, I'd have to ask the ACL to see what the intention was about that, but uh, I wanna make sure that this, ex this uh, cap is still in and it. it does, the cap looks good. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up adding a new wire. So let me grab an X230. Uh,
Sorry, I'm coming. I'm just trying to find the right gauge. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to grab this XT30, right? And I end up cutting it quite a bit. Um, this connection, I, I do like it more. It's, it's, I mean, you can just compare the two. Um, this XT30 is much better, uh, much stronger XT30. Um, the wiring is thicker. And then I'm just going to try to see if I can read this here. Uh, where is that? Yeah. And then what do they have here? Uh, there's no writing on this one. I'm going to assume that's 18 gauge. Uh, and this is going to be 16 gauge. Um, but it is going to be long as well. And so what my goal here is going to be to actually run the wire. See if I can get it through the cap here. Right? And kind of like this. If I can run it like that. All right, then the cap can go down. That won't be a problem. But at least the cable can sit here. Or I guess, depending on how it wants to do it, I'll leave that up to the customer. But we definitely know that it doesn't need to be this long of a cable, okay? So um, if we're running it to the bottom, uh, I don't know, let's just get a measurement you guys can use. Uh, so I would say that this cable is gonna be, I mean, no more than 50 millimeters. I mean, that's still long in my opinion, but I'll give it to him at 50 considering that this one is uh, 80 or 70 uh, between, hold on, what is that, 75. So I'm gonna take it about 25 millimeters down and to be honest with you, I may even take it more than that. So let me just see if I was to, like right here is good. Okay, so let's do, well, I'll leave it at 50. I mean, it's fine, because I'm gonna end up cutting it and then taking some down anyway, so let's do that. So let's knock it at 50. All right. All right, we're gonna put this one away. As a matter of fact, yeah, we'll hold on to that there so we can use it at the end of the video. Uh, let's go ahead and strip these wires down. And again, guys, I sell the XT30s on our website uh, like this in both 16 and 14 gauge. Uh, I sell the XT30s in 12 and 14 and 16 gauge. Um, I also sell these with the caps on them, the capacitors on them, if you want to have an easier way to do it. Uh, holy cow, my phone's just going crazy. Um, I'm going to open up the flux paste now, so sucker's a little bit of a pain to do, but there we go. All right, now let's clean up a little bit here. Let's get that out of the way, get that away, get this trash out. Okay, throw this out. Okay, um, put this ruler back. I'm trying my best. I've spent the last two weeks cleaning, uh, and uh, it has. I'm trying to be more disciplined about this. Okay, um, so where are we at? Where's my cable now? Did I throw it? I saw something go fly. I didn't know if that was a cable. Oh no, I saw it. Okay, so here we go. Here's my cable. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put it in the solder paste. And again, we're just gonna kind of wiggle that solder paste, or not solder paste, the flux paste in there, right? We just wanna get it in there real good. Oh, I need to drop the temperature back down. Holy crud, soldering iron is cooking. All right. Let me clean that tip off here real quick with that iron. There we go. And you can see once it's getting clean, it starts smoking. Then put it in the copper pad there, and there you go, right? So we're gonna let that cool down to the degrees that I want. And this, we've got the uh, flux paste now worked into the wiring. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a little, well, you know what? For people that don't have helping hands, here's the solution, right? Just grab yourself your uh, pliers here or whatever, and put a rubber band on the end of it like this, okay. There we go. All right, and that'll just hold it in place while we solder. And then, let's just tin it up nicely, right? Make sure you get a good, nice, even tin around the whole wire. There we go, looks good. Now we can put our pliers away here. Okay, clean that soldering iron off. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and put everything back. So first thing I need to do is let me go ahead and close this up. Again, I gotta start keeping track and putting my stuff away. My wife has got a valid point. Uh, oh, can't argue with her anymore about it. I gotta start cleaning. All right. Oh, by the way, um, where are they? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where are they? 
Where's my Lego guys? Oh, dude. Well, I was gonna show my sons, they're not with me today, but I wanted them to see that I found some of the Lego guys that we were looking for and I was gonna show them. Uh, but anyway, shout out to my, my boys there, uh, Ashton, Lennon, and Jaden. Love you guys, cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow. Um, and please stay safe and be careful. Okay, uh, let's see. So, let's get to it. Let's go ahead and get the XT30 lined up. We're just gonna go ahead, and now that I've tinned it with my solder, this should get on there pretty quickly. Should be kind of a hassle-free solder job. There's one. Let's do the other side. And there's two. That's it. So now you can see I've got, hmm, I got these. Sorry. One second, guys. I apologize. I got to make sure everything's okay. Uh, okay. All right. Um, so uh, you can see now we've got the new XT30 uh, soldered on. It's on there solid. Uh, the cap is on there. And I would say that if you're going to, you know, run it down, just put it between the uh, cap like that and you'll be able to put your battery in with no problems. Okay, so I don't see a problem there at all. You could even bring the cap up if you want a little bit. So that's that. Now let's go ahead and uh, turn this around here. And we will, uh, let me see, I want to mount this back without too much kink in the wire here. So let's put this here. I tell you guys, um, I, I will point something else out here. And again, it could just be me being, you know, me. I mean, that's me. But uh, I am bothered by this here as well. Um, these two wires are fully exposed and on the capacitor. And literally, they are able to hit the carbon fiber should this uh, collapse down. Um, I don't even understand why it's like that. But I'm going to try to protect this by putting the wires inside this little area. I don't, I don't think that it's a very good idea to put the cap right there like that. Um, but hopefully by putting these wires here, I'm hoping that this will prevent that from happening. Um, I just don't like that. I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even see that until just now. And it's like, wow, that looks really, uh, really concerning. The other option would be maybe to run a zip tie around here. Maybe I'll do that instead and let the customer decide which way he wants to do it. But I don't like that. I don't think those wires should be exposed like that. Uh, and especially not near carbon fiber. Again, I'll talk to HDLRC about it. I mean, it, it is concerning to me that it would be like that. But let me just run this here. Hopefully try to keep this cap off the carbon fiber. Um, and it doesn't have, this doesn't have to be tight or anything. You just kind of want to stop the cap from being able to go down like that. Um, so that's maybe a little bit of preventative uh, help there, but I don't like the idea. So please, if yours does look like that, just understand that if that cap does, if whatever happens on this quad causes that cap to those two hit the carbon fiber, you're going to blow the cap and you may screw up your quad. So please be very careful with that. Um, okay, so that's that. Now I am going to go ahead and fire this up real quick just to make sure that the work I did is good. I'm going to use my uh, smoke stopper again. And there we go. Everything, okay, everything looks solid there. All right, and I know it's interfering with the video because of the VTX kicking on. I didn't unplug it again, but it is powering up with no problem. Um, so now we're just gonna close it up. Everything else looks really clean and really good. Uh, I think we're gonna have that protected. So again, I'll leave that to the customer to decide, but I do advise that something stay like this so this cap cannot come down and touch that. And now let's close this up. Okay, so we've gotta put our camera back on. this and we're going 
to, I'm trying to think of how the customer would really like this to be done. I guess what we can do is, let's do this here. I hate to put on top of the VTX though, that's the thing. Tell you what, it's going to be a close call on this one. So I'm going to see if I can get the tape, try to fit it without it pressing too hard on that because it's going to end up um, accidentally pressing the bind button during the flight. And I don't want that to happen either. So let me just see if I can get this here with glue. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn the glue gun on and uh, make sure this will fit. So while that's happening, I'm just going to go ahead and start heat shrinking uh, the uh, receiver wires. I am going to extend them a little bit. Um, so let's see, this is a blue quad. So let me see if I've got a color, a blue that will work with this. I'm not sure I do, but I'll try. Let me see if I can find it. Does that fit? Nope. Hmm. Well, it doesn't look like that's going to happen, so I guess we can go with the yellow. Totally break the color here. Um, well, maybe just a black and leave it like it was. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's do that. And I think what we can do is then mount this this way. kink this wire too much sorry guys I'm just trying to think the best way that I think this would survive So we'll do that one there. Let's see, shrink this to that length. coffee. Let's do the next one. Excellent. All right, that should be good. So now our glue gun should be pretty much ready. Let me see. That's hot. All right. So let me get. Let's get some glue stick here, just because this is running low. And again, if you want the glue sticks that I use and the glue guns and everything are all on the side as well. They're in the tool section. By all means, please. Everything that I use here is what I sell. I don't, I, I you know, if, I, if it's good enough for me to sell it, it's good enough for me to use it, obviously. So, uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, because I want to make sure there's enough room to turn this over, and there is. So, 
Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna run a little bit of glue right here. Turn this over and just get it to hold enough to where I feel confident that it's gonna be pretty secure. And make sure that bind button is not in the way of anything. And it looks pretty good. So, bind button looks to be clear. Okay. So now we can go ahead and get this mounted like that. And I'll start fastening this down. I think you might even be able to get to the bind button without having to take the top off here. Let me see. right there sorry guys I'm trying to see if the customer might be able to and yeah I think so I can see it so it'd be kind of neat but in either case it's only it's really close there anyway so it wouldn't be too bad all right let's go ahead and fasten that down fasten this down are clear everything looks good I'll tighten it up And if you decide, if the customer decides like, hey, I don't want it glued there, you just take, I mean, it took two seconds of the heat gun and that glue is going to come off. So you can move it anywhere you like. All right, there is, I, I mean, the only thing, oh, there's something I don't like now. Sorry, guys, but I just realized that there's something I'm not comfortable with here. So let me just verify. Because there is too much, that, 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 that receiver is just a little too much um, getting pressed here. And I don't know if it's because of the wiring or what but it might be uh, and the glue's keeping it off so tell you what I mean what I'll do is I'll take the glue off for now see how it just kind of pops off there it's glues really good so if you want some good hot glue just look on our shop and you'll find it there it's very solid but it, it kind of it peels off very easily as well so let me just see here I'm just gonna leave it for the customer like this then if that makes it easier and he can adjust it as he wishes Okay. All right. Now let's get these cameras tightened down. Sorry, I just didn't like leaving it like that. There was something about it that really didn't sit well. So and I'm going to assume that the customer changed the screw out. I I don't know if he did or not, but this screw is seeming to be uh, unable to get into here and I don't know why but that piece is staying loose so it just happened to be that I noticed that now see how it's kind of stopping right there that's way too long so let's find a smaller screw for this uh, camera so I'm gonna grab a let's see that's a four millimeter and that's a two millimeter piece so let's grab a four millimeter screw and see if we can get this to um, sit a little more solid perhaps it's not tightening so one side is tight and the other one is kind of just smooth there we go perfect all right so now let's see what we got I don't know just a couple little things you know that I'm, no I'm noticing on this that I'm not liking sorry guys let me turn this uh, turn that ringer off so let's put this here
don't move it, this would be great. Don't move. Put that back down. Bring our top plate back over. Make sure I get a good clearance here, and I'm not comfortable with this at all, I guys. I mean, like I'm I'm pretty picky about this stuff, and I'm not comfortable with the amount of clearance this thing is being given. So let me see if I can back it up a little bit more. All right, let's place it like this, maybe, because it is teetering too much. Whoops, it is teetering way too much over here, and I'm not going to send it back with heat shrink without heat shrink on it. I don't care. But that's not, even if that's the only way it fits, it's not going back like that. Because I can tell you right now that there's no way I'm going to let, I wouldn't fly my quad like that. So I'm not going to expect somebody else to. Um, so let's see if we can make this. There, that's better. We just move it back and that seems to be within the sweet spot there, finally. Okay. So, let's go ahead and put the back screws back on. And please, if you guys fly these, please check to see if your receiver has heat shrink on it. And if it doesn't, just let me know. Um, I'd be curious to see how many are like that. Um, and I'll try to help you get some heat shrink so at least you can protect your quad better. Uh, so yeah, that's on there. And uh, it is a tight fit, but it'll be okay for now. All right, and now I am going to one second. screw on there a little bit stronger one I guess let me just do that real quick all right and there we go so uh, everything's back together now we'll power it up power it up one more time make sure that everything's good Okay, everything looks good. I saw the lights from the receiver on, everything powered up good. So there you go. So uh, the quad is done now. And um, we've got a new receiver in there. We did replace the XT30 cable. Everything powers up, everything looks great. So it's ready to be sent back to the customer. Okay guys, sorry. Uh, I took a little bit longer on this one because I was expecting one, to be able to uh, show you how to do the bind button issue. And then number two, because I wanted to, I didn't like the way this was seated. and. Even though it was only sent in here to replace the receiver, I was not comfortable uh, sending it back without, you know, without being heat shrunk. And then in return, because of that, it causes an issue um, uh, fitting. But that's too bad. You got you to be safe with this thing. And I can tell you that having that exposed like that's not a good idea. Okay. So anyways, so there it is. Ready to go. Let's head back to the customer right now. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please just email me. Uh, use the form there to email me at the uh, our contact form because my email is now so inundated that I'm, I'm, I'm not able to keep up between the difference between the spam and the regular stuff. And so I'm asking to just use the contact form that way I can get back with you quicker. Um, and right now, please understand that during this uh, coronavirus um, and uh, stay at home 
order. I'm very inundated with a lot of work, so my response time is going to be a little bit longer. It's going to take me a little longer right now because, I mean, I'm getting a lot more stuff uh, from folks uh, asking me questions. And then finally, please um, uh, please follow us and subscribe to us and do all that, st that good stuff, okay? Sorry, I'm hitting all my buttons. They're all screwed up. Um, finally, listen, uh, y'all be safe. Uh, I just read that they are expecting this coronavirus to in the U.S. to really cause some serious problems. I mean, beyond what they initially told us. And I worry. I worry for my kids, your kids, and everybody else. So please... Spend time with your family. Be safe. God bless. Say your prayers when you can. Uh, and uh, most of all, spend time with your kids and your family because you never know when that time may be up. Okay? Stay flying, guys. Talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.